Hey everyone, this is Frida Lager, Raja Raiva, and I'm here with my recap review of The Wheel of Time, season number two, episode number eight, which is titled What Was Meant to Be. And I have to say that while I enjoyed the finale, I do think that the entire, yeah, this entire season more or less felt like season two, part A. Even after the finale, it didn't feel like an entire season finale. It felt like a mid-season finale for some reason. Because there, because there's still a lot of threats that weren't really, yeah, they weren't really developed. They're still dangling. And again, again, I, again, a good thing at, le at least is that uh, the this, this series has been renewed for season number three. So we'll get to see what Ran and his crew are up to soon enough. So coming back to the finale, it opens up 3000 years ago with a flashback and we have Lewis talking to Ishmael and Ishmael is like, Lewis, why don't you just turn to the dark side? Just end the wheel and let it, let it all be over. And Lewis is like, I can't do that. If I destroy the wheel, then I destroy everyone I've ever loved. And he's like, Ishi, I know how you don't like, how much you don't like living, but you know what? I'm not going to kill you because I don't want to go through this over and over again. What I am going to do is that I'm going to trap you. And Ishii's like, no, 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 don't trap me, don't trap me. And Louis is like, well, it is what it is, old friend. And then, yeah, the flashback is basically showing us that Louis ended up trapping uh, Ishii. And I think the finale is the only episode this entire season where we ended up getting the opening theme. And I'm like, I missed the opening theme. And at first I was like, maybe they, did, they made certain changes. But no, as far as I can tell, it's the same as the season one's opening theme. So we get to see the white cloaks and we get to see that young man again talking to his dad and the white cloaks with uh, with uh, Valda are headed to farm to fight uh, the Senchen and everyone and and the young man is like I I, I forgot his name he like when which episode did he appear in back in episode 2 or something and he never appeared again so I forgot his name <laughs> but yeah he's like dad do you really think we're going to fight uh, we we'll be able to uh, defeat a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of women who can weave uh, and stuff. And his dad's like, yeah, because we have something that they don't. And I'm like, ooh, what's that supposed to be? And we get to find that out uh, soon enough. We cut to Lenfear taking Moraine, Lan, and Bran through the way, uh, towards the way gate to farm. And as they're making their way, this is where Lenfear is like, yeah, just open the door, Moraine. And Moraine's like, I can't. You know that Ishmael did something to my powers. And Lenfear is like, ooh, you're a liar, girl. <laughs> I can actually see that he, that the weave was uh, untangled by, uh, was cut by Ran. So you, you know how to use your powers. So open the gate. And before Moraine can do that, Lenfear ends up... Up, uh, kicking, uh, kicking Moraine and Lan out of the way gate, and Rand is like, "Why would you do that? Uh, how am I supposed to trust you?" And Fear is like, "You know what? Moraine and Lan has their have their own role to play. You're coming with me." And because Lanfear ended up using magic, Manchin, Chinchin, whatever that monster's name was, he ended up detecting them and he's coming towards them. And I think that Lanfear actually uses the monster to teleport. Or I could be wrong. I'm not really sure. Aaron and the three women make their way to farm and uh, yeah, they notice a mist coming towards the city as well. And yeah, they're they're ready to fight. And Baron tells his little wolf buddy to stay and not uh, and that he'll be back for the wolf. And I'm like, ooh, you just know, you just know that the wolf is going to come to Baron's aid and the wolf is going to get hurt. And oh, we'll, we'll get to it. Lanfear decides to pay Ishia with it, and Ishi is like, why would you bring Rand here? If this wasn't part of the plan. He won't turn, uh, in order for all of this to work, he needs to turn to the dark side, and you're rushing through everything. And Lanfear is like, oh, Ishi, I know you. You're all this type of person who waits way too long before before doing something. I'm just giving you and Rand a gentle push. And uh, he's like, okay, so Rand really trusts you? And uh, Lanfear is like, yeah, he trusts me, because uh, I, I, I told him that I'll help him uh, dis uh, end you. And in order for him to turn to the dark side, he needs to realize that all of us aren't the same. And I'm like, okay, so is, is Lanfear really double-crossing Rand? What, what's happening here? So we get to see that the mist was being created by these little children walking around with these mist lamp thingies. And inside the mist were the white cloaks. And yeah, the white cloaks ended up surprise attacking Fam. 
we get a scene where Nea and Eve ended up uh, in the pre- because in the previous episode they ended up capturing one of the Sultane and uh, this entire scene showed Nea and Eve tapping into her dark side in order to torture the Sultane to tell her where Egwene is and the Sultane is like please take everything off, uh, this collar off me and I'll tell you and Nea and Eve says no 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 my rules so you have to tell me and if you don't and if you end up lying to me I will I will make you regret the day that you were born and I like I like seeing Nea and Eve's dark side because again even back in season number one, you can tell that Nea Neve will do anything to protect her friends. We cut to Egwene and this is where her Sultane comes in and she's like, okay, so the city is, is at war. All of the Sultane are, collect, are uh, gathering up on the tower to defend the city and you have to follow my orders. If you don't, the punishment is that your tongue will be taken away and after that, your hands. So are you are you uh, willing willing to disobey me? And Egwene does, does kind of disobey her, but yeah, she takes out a knife and Egwene is like, okay, Okay, fine, I'll do what you want. I do what you want me to do. And because the Sultane isn't really a nice person, she's like, you know what? What would I know what would hurt you more? I'm gonna take away your braid. And she just cuts Egwene's braid off, and I'm like, Egwene needs to kill her. Egwene needs to I, I just want her I just want to see her killing her. And and she does. So is she smart? Is she realizes that Lenfear ended up betraying him and he ends up talking to the merchant and he's like, you know what? She brought the dragon reborn here and we can't really uh, push him to the dark side anymore. So what we need to do is that we need to kill him so that everything wor- uh, everything uh, resets and uh, the merchant is like, okay, so who's, who's going to kill Rand? And she's like, I know who's going to kill Rand and I know which dagger he's going to use. We get to this entire scene where the merchant brings in the dagger and, and he places it in front of Matt and he's like, you're gonna touch it, you're gonna succumb to the darkness. And he basically tells Rand that, hey, while all of us think of uh, think of ourselves as heroes, Matt, you realize that you aren't a hero, right? You will touch this dagger and you will kill the dragon reborn. And we finally have Lan and Moraine talk about what's been happening between them. And Lan is like, hey, Moraine, now that you have uh, reconnected with the One Power, I need you to bring back our bond. And Moraine is like, no, are you really sure you want that? After everything I've put you through, and Lan is like, hey, Moraine, I know you, okay? I know that one of the reasons that you took away our bond is that because you don't want me uh, realizing how helpless and how afraid and how anxious you feel. But Moraine, uh, I'm ready for all of the emotions that you're feeling you have to you have to like reconnect us and he's also like and also Moraine I understand when you told me that we aren't equals I understand what you meant I am lower than you and I accept that but I still want to be around you and still want to protect you and Moraine is like you know what Lan I was able to say that we aren't equals because you are better than me and I was I was close to crying during that scene I won't lie I was so close to crying because I just knew I just knew that Moraine when she said that to Lan that's what she meant and Lan oh, I'm like oh yeah I, I, I love these two together but yeah Lan needs to also go and reconnect with Nea Neve. like what the heck is happening there now, this is something that I didn't really like. It's that uh, Og- the Ogier and the other guards that were held captive, they ended up basically stealing the Horn of Vilir. And all of that happened off screen. And I'm like, uh, I would have liked to see that. Like, this is the finale. Give me more scenes. But now, all of that happened off screen. And But hey. Hey, I guess the story has to move on. And yeah, though, uh, those uh, two end up meeting with Baron's group and they are ready to fight. But this is also where the guard is like, hey, we need to take the horn to Dragon, uh, the Dragon Reborn because this horn is going to summon the, summon the fighters from the past. And that's the only way we'll be able to fight the Dark One. And we have to go now. And the Ogier and Baron is like, uh, are like, no, we won't be leaving our friends behind. We have to go and we have to save Egwene. And, uh, yeah, I understand that we need the help from the heroes of the past but what about the heroes in the present that we are so we have to stick together Egwene is at the tower and at first she hesitates but then she sees the white she sees the white cloaks and I'm like ooh memories from season number one I guess and that allows her to basically start attacking the white cloaks and as Rand is making his way towards the tower because he saw Egwene heading there and he wants to save Egwene Durak and his forces try to stop uh, Rand and yeah Rand just like he channels into the one power and he basically one shots all of them and I'm like oh okay who who taught you that and yeah because this is a finale and it's the big one of the big battles uh one of the guards dies you know the one who was good looking this one 
And as Moraine and Lan are walking on the beach towards uh, the city of Farm, this is where Lan notices that Moraine is happier, she is quicker, she feels uh, re-energized. And Moraine is like, no, I think it's all of that is just because I am not really walking around with buckets over my shoulders. But I do feel that because Rand is the one who reconnected her to the One Power, I think her connection is stronger than it used to be. And as these two are walking, this is where they're like, okay, so all of this was Lan part of Lan Fear's plan, but why did Ishi only wait? wake up Lanfear? Why didn't he wake up the other uh, dark uh, the dark friends, the dark ones? Not the dark ones, basically the friends. And uh, this is where Marina's is like, you know what, from what I can tell from my research, it turns out that Louis, Ishii, and Lanfear were close. They were best friends. And all three of them used to be together. So maybe that's why Ishii only resurrected Lanfear. We get this scene between Lanfear and uh, the seller from way back in season, uh, in episode number one, uh, the, the guy who ended up giving the, the prophecy slash poem to Moraine. And basically Lanfear gives him something. I think it's the pieces of the seal or something. And she wants him to go and throw them in the, in the ocean so that they can never be found again. From what I understand, and I could be wrong, I think that she is basically trying to prevent the other uh, dark friends from um, uh, being released. Ishii ends up going to talk to the leader of the Sultane and he tells her uh, about being under attack and that he wants her help now and even uh, and that the horn is stolen so they don't have a lot of time. So basically what he wants is that he, wa he wants her to uh, take her ships outside the city and then find a way to basically uh, disconnect Rand from the One Power. And then after that's done, they're free to uh, gentle him. Matt finds a way to do, use the dagger without really touching it. So basically, he bas he pushes the dagger off the table and then he takes a, uh, uh, by using a stick and then he uses a stick and a dagger to create a spear for himself. And he uses the dagger to burn through the, do uh, the locked door and yeah, he's free. And the merchant is like, yeah, I knew that you that you wouldn't be able to resist the call of the dagger, so it took you an hour, huh? And then he realizes that Matt has a freaking dagger and he is ready to fight. And of course, the merchant runs away. Because Egwene ended up not following her Sultane's instructions, this is where the Sultane is like, okay, so I'm going to take your tongue, I'm going to take your hands, unless you start doing what I want you to do. And Egwene's like, uh-uh-uh, ain't doing that. And Egwene, yeah, Egwene really wants her dead. But before the Sultane can punish her, this is where it turns out that the White Cloaks had a bunch of catapults and then they use the catapults to destroy the tower and start hitting the witches. And everyone gets hit even Egwene, and I'm like, oh, I, I know that she's going to live, though. And then a lot happens because as Nynaeve, the princess, and their hostage are walking through the city, this is where an arrow ends up killing the hostage. Nynaeve feels that, and then there's also the catapult explosion. Her ears are ringing, and the princess gets uh, hit by an arrow in the leg. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I guess Nynaeve is going to try and heal her. Turns out that all of the Sultane ended up being killed. Uh, and even, I think that that uh, on the floor is the blue Aja. She got killed too. But Wayne does notice one of the callers, one of those uh, Adam callers or whatever they were called. And yeah, she ends up using that. But we'll we'll get to that in a bit. Matt and Baron end up meeting each other and uh, he's Baron is like, okay, oh, well, Matt, you're, you're still alive? And Matt is like, yeah, Rand is alive too. I just saw him. And they're like, okay, so we need to take the horn to Rand. And uh, at first they're like, okay, we'll do this together. But now they get attacked and Matt is uh, is now responsible for bringing the horn to Rand. And I'm like, ooh, I think I can see where this is going. Egwene ends up using the collar on Rena. I think her name was Rena, right? I could be wrong, but let's call her Rena. So she she ends up using the collar on Rena, and Rena is like, "Oh, you foolish Egwene! The collar only works on women who can channel." And Egwene is like, "Yeah." And that's who you are. You can channel. And then this is where Egwene is like, you know what I noticed? I was wondering how you, Soldane, were able to connect with us and use us and feel us. So it turns out that you you are able to channel as well. But you are so weak that, be, that you are undetectable. And that's why you kind of make up for it by being, by being evil and enslaving us and everything. So Egwene starts trying to choke Rene, Rene, and Rene is like, you know what, you're still my Damane, so whatever I feel, you feel as well. So Egwene is like, you know what, I don't give a, I don't give a damn, and I won't take this collar off until you release me. So she starts uh, hurting uh, 
uh, Rene and she's also getting hurt because she's hurting Rene. But we know from season number one, we know that Egwene has a high pain tolerance and she's able to tolerate a lot of pain. And then Rene breaks and she ends up freeing Egwene. And then we come to a moment where Egwene has to make a decision. Is she gonna release uh, Rene or is she gonna kill her? And I was like, you know what? Narratively, it would make sense for Egwene to kill her, especially because this is a wheel, right? Because Lenfear was in love with Lewis, and then uh, Lenfear ended up coming to the dark side. Maybe Egwene will kind of have to fight those... Uh, 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 she might end up having to fight uh, such desires too, right? She might end up feeling herself going over to the darkness. That could be a thing. And she and, and her killing Rene and, and maybe open the door for her. Rand comes to see Egwene on the ground. And at, at first I wanted Nea Neve and the princess to find a way to rescue Egwene. But you know what? Egwene rescuing herself. I'm like, more power to you, girl. More, po more power to you. Before Ran can take uh, Egwene out of the tower, this is where she appears and he pushes Egwene away and he ends up uh, fighting Ran and Ran is ready to fight Ishmael, uh, Ishi, but yeah, Ishi has a plan. The Sultani end up uh, restricting uh, Ran's uh, access to the one power and yeah, he can't, he can't channel, he can't do nothing and Ishi is just there. Nea Neve is having trouble channeling and I'm like, girl, get over yourself. Use your healing channeling powers to heal everyone in the city. We get to see Valda fighting Perrin and he's a and he's about to kill Perrin, but of course Perrin's wolf comes in to offer aid, and as he's fighting into Valda, the handsome guy's dad, I think the captain of the White Clothes, he comes in and he kills the wolf, and I'm like, oh no. Oh no. And we get this entire scene where the wolf is dying and we get to see his spirit go into the afterlife and Baron sees all of that. And yeah, he's in a fit of rage. As Matt is running towards uh, the tower, this is where he's stopped by quite a bunch of soldiers and he can't fight them all, all at once, right? So he's like, you know what, last, last ditch attempt, I'm going to use the horn. And he actually uses the horn and everyone hears it. It's as if time slows down and we get to see Perrin killing the handsome guy's dad, the general of the white folks. And I'm like, ooh, that, that, that young man is gonna want revenge now. The horn ends up summoning the ghosts, are basically the heroes of the horn, and we get to see one of Perrin's associates in there too. You know, the guy with the with the eye patch, and yeah, they all they all help fight, uh, help Rand fight the soldiers, and that's who not Rand Matt. They all help Matt to fight the soldiers. We cut back to Nea Neve, and yeah, she's still unable to channel some healing weaves to help the princess, and this is where the princess is like, you know what? Let's just forget it. You're a wisdom, Nea Neve. Use what you you know. And Nani was like, okay, so what we need to do is that we need to push the arrow out of your leg. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then she does that. And I'm like, oh, wow, Nani, wow. Even though Rand isn't able to channel, he is still able to find strength in himself to stand up to Ishi. And he's like, Ishi, I'm going to make something clear to you. I will never turn to the dark side. I highly doubt that any one of my reincarnations have done that. And I'm not going to be the first one to do it. And Matt comes in to save Rand and he ends up throwing the spear and the spear goes through Ishi and it hits Rand. And I'm like, Matt, no! So it turns out that the Ishi that Rand was talking to, he was just an illusion. And yeah, the prophecy came to be. Matt ended up stabbing the Dragon Reborn. Ishi is going to kill Rand and, and break uh, and basically reset the wheel. But before he can do that, Egwene stands up and she stops Ishi from attacking Rand. And that takes Ishi by surprise. He's like, how, how are you able to push me back to, to hurt me? And I'm like, ooh, you don't, you don't want to mess with an angry Egwene. Ishi starts attacking Egwene and Egwene gets her Orihime on and she summons a shield. And Ishi is not breaking through the shield. This is where Lan and uh, Moraine notice something and she is like, okay, so I think that they are shielding Rand and Rand is up on the tower and the people who are shielding him are uh, are in, in the ships that we see. And Lan is like, wait, there could be innocent people on the ships. And Moraine is like, you know what, Lan, I need you to realize this, that when it comes to supporting Rand, I don't give a F about 
thousands of people dying if that means that he can live and the prophecy can be fulfilled. So are you with me? Lan is like, okay, yeah, I'm with you. So yeah, what what Moraine is trying to do with Rand, it's far bigger. And I like that because in a lot of stories, they're like, oh no, we can't kill a single person to protect the universe. And I'm like, when it comes to balancing things out, when it comes to weighing them, a single person dying it's it kind of makes sense when it when it when it means that the entire reality can be saved. So I liked how the narrative allowed Moraine to do that. She looked at the picture in a more with a with a more uh, logical with a logical lens. With Lan taking on the soldiers, we get to see Moraine weaving, and she ends up weaving a very powerful spell. Because Egwene can't hold off Ishi for uh, forever, her 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 shield starts to weaken, and this is where Perrin comes in with his shield uh, to support uh, Egwene. Neonive and the princess are there as well, and first I was like, okay, so is Neonive gonna uh, boost the shield too? But no, Neonive basically does nothing in the finale, and I was really disappointed in that. The princess ends up healing Rand, and as he and as she's healing Rand, Rand looks at her and he's like, "Who are you?" And she's like, "I'm the princess." And I'm like, "Ooh, is he gonna fall in love with her? Is Rand gonna fall in love with a bunch of women?" First, I was like, "Okay, so is Moraine gonna summon a tsunami?" But no, she doesn't do that. What she does is that she ends up summoning a fireball that erupts from the sea, and then it jumps from ship to ship, destroying the entire fleet. And I'm like, you know what? Points for creativity. With him being reconnected with the One Power again, this is where Rand stands up and he basically stabs Ishii. And he's like, you know what, old friend? I'm sorry I had to do this, but it needed to be done. And I think the scar is supposed to represent a dragon. Uh, I could be wrong. The scar on Rand's hand. And Ishii dies in front of Rand and he's like, old friend, can't you see? Can't you see it's so beautiful? And Rand is like, what are you seeing? And he's like, nothing. I see nothing. It's time for Rand to announce uh, himself as a Dragon Reborn and Moraine ends up summoning another fireball and she uses the fireball to basically shape itself into the dragon and yeah, on the tower we get to see Rand, his friends and the princess. The episode basically ends with Lenfear being all happy and jolly and she goes into her room and this is where she notices... I think her, uh, another woman, and the woman's name is Mordir or Mordain. And yeah, it turns out that Ishii ended up uh, opening all of them without Lenfear knowing. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. Because remember in the very first episode, we saw that Len uh, that uh, Ishmael was sitting at a table and there were other people at the table too. So maybe some of them were the dark ones. And I'm like, ooh, Ishii, he knew. He knew that Lenfear was going to double cross him. So he ended up uh, releasing all of his friends. And yeah, the, the new woman is like, again, her, her, her name is Mogdane or something like that. And she's like, oh, Lenfear, Lenfear, you and Ishii you were too close to the dragon reborn and that was your weakness so what we are going to do is that we are giving you a warning we are warning you that you need to step uh, stay away from the dragon reborn and you need to let us what we let us do what we need to do and if you don't we're going to make you regret and the Lenfear is like do you really want to fight me Mordir because I think Lenfear is still uh, the most strongest I think Ishi and Lenfear were the strongest or maybe other or maybe the others are stronger, or maybe the others are stronger if they work together to face Lenfear. I don't know. But yeah, because Lenfear does ask Mogdane that you really don't want to fight me, right? And Mogdane is like, yeah, I don't want to fight you. Because I think that she is more like a spider. She she weaves her web very gently, very silently. And when she attacks, she doesn't miss. And she's like, yeah, uh, I don't want to fight you, but I am warning you. Stay away from us. She releases Lenfear from her web and Lenfear is really, really shaken because she's like, uh oh, may the light protect you, Ran. <laughs> and this is where the season ends. Again, this this finale felt like a mid-season finale and I hope that season three comes back soon. Overall, I was disappointed in, disappointed in Nyanif basically doing nothing. But hey, hey, it... It is what it is, right? It is what it is. There's still a lot that uh, needs to be addressed when it comes to uh, the dark friends in uh, the dark Aja or the black Aja, I think they're called. The black Aja, Neonif having, uh, she needs to, she needs to rechannel. And then Egwene and Rand, I guess, recovering, trying to mend their relationship. 
there's still a lot. There's still so much story left. And again, as I said, I hope that season three comes soon. Let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comment section below. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later.